Tbomb.com. Hi, this is Howie Gordon for Keybomb.com, and today I'm going to show you how to set up Ableton Live as a host for soft synth plugins for use in a live performance setting. Uh, so in this case, we'll be using a laptop as the core of our sounds that we'll be triggering from our external MIDI controller. Uh, there are so many great sounding virtual instruments on the market today, and if you've ever wondered how you can take those out on a gig and play them from a MIDI controller, I'm going to show you one of the ways you can do it. Like most other professional audio software, there is usually more than one way to perform most tasks within Ableton Live. So uh, today I'm going to show you some of the different ways to perform the tasks that we have ahead of us today. To begin with, I've created a new document in Live, and as you can see, we have one audio track and one MIDI track. Note the track meters if we go down here and take a look. A track outputting audio will show a plasma meter, uh, in this case a dual plasma meter to indicate a stereo track. And a track outputting MIDI will show a segmented LED style meter. Now for our purposes today we don't need the audio track so I'm going to select the track by clicking on its title and press the delete key. Uh, another way to do that would be to select the track and go to edit and hit delete. Okay. Um, I'm a big fan of learning the keyboard shortcuts because they ultimately will save you a lot of time. And uh, there's a couple that I will be pointing out today that would be very handy for you to know. Alright, so now all we have left is the one MIDI track. So before we go any further, we need to make sure that the input-output section um, is visible on the tracks. And if it is not, what you want to do is go over here and you will see the I.O. button here and you want to click on that. And now if we go back to the track, we'll notice that the input-output section is visible. What the I.O. section enables us to do is specify the audio or MIDI routing on each track. Uh, so here we have the input section, we have the monitor section, and we have the output section of the track. And one of the great things about uh, Ableton Live is that the tracks automatically configure themselves to root uh, audio or MIDI, depending on the type of track you have set up. So the next task is to assign a soft synth to our MIDI track. And what we want to do is go over here to the left side of the screen and click on the plug-in device browser. Now I already have it selected. And what that is going to do is show you all the um, virtual instruments and other plug-in devices you have available to you for use within Live. So to start, I'm going to load one of my favorite plugins, the uh, Applied Acoustics Lounge Lizard 3, which is a uh, Rhodes and Wurlitzer sounding plugin. And I'm just going to grab it and drop it right on the track. And you'll notice that the control window pops open right away. Uh, so for right now, we don't actually need to see these controls, so I'm just going to close the window, and then for some reason the Lounge Lizard actually pops open two windows. I'm not really sure why, but uh, uh, anyway, we're going to close them. Now, if you, just for future notice, if you do want to look at those panels once again, all you have to do is go down here to the bottom of the screen where we see our Lounge Lizard plugin, and click on the wrench icon. So if you click on that, once again, the windows pop open. And then once again, I'm actually going to close those because we don't need to look at them right now at the moment. All right, now the next step is to go over to the input section and configure the MIDI inputs. And you'll notice that since this is a MIDI track, the input section of the track has automatically configured itself to give you options for the MIDI routing. Now, however, I just want to point this out. Since this is a soft synth plugin, running on the track. If you look down here, you'll notice that the output section of the track has automatically configured itself to give you options for audio output. So this track takes MIDI input and then runs it through the plugin and turns it into audio output. Okay? Um, for now, in the audio section, we're just going to keep this on master. And 
uh, an upcoming tutorial, I'll show you how to configure more advanced external audio output routing. But for now, again, we're just going to keep it on master, just to make this tutorial nice and easy. And finally, if you notice uh, the track meter, you'll notice that, again, it is a plasma meter to represent audio output. And in this case, you'll see the two plasma meters there to represent a stereo output on the track. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is specify the MIDI input. So in this case, I'm going to go to MIDI from, right now it says All Ins. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to select my, uh, the interface I have selected here is the Fastlane USB. And I'm going to select port A. Now, you'll notice that it is defaulted to receive MIDI from all channels. But since we're going to have multiple instruments, we don't want all channels. We're going to specify a specific channel. So what we're going to do is tell it to receive MIDI on channel 1 only. Okay. Now when I go over and play my MIDI controller, you'll notice right here that it, the meter is uh, jumping and showing that we do have MIDI being received. However, we are not hearing anything. Um, and that is because the input monitoring mode, uh, when you create a track, defaults to auto. What auto mode does is it monitors the track input while recording and then automatically switches to monitor the recorded track data on playback. But for our purposes, since we're not recording anything and we want to hear the soft synth all the time, we're going to set this to in. And what in mode does is basically it just monitors the input of the track all the time. So now when I play my MIDI controller, we actually start to hear the instrument. And finally, one thing we want to do is also name the track just so we know what it is. So I select the track, and we go to Edit, Rename. Now you'll notice that the key command is Command-R for Mac, and for Windows it would be Control-R. And we hit that, and I'm just going to type LL3 for Lounge Lizard 3. And again, that key command is something you're definitely going to want to remember because naming uh, your tracks and naming other things is going to be a very, very useful thing to do in terms of just being able to keep track of things visually. So let's go ahead and set up another instrument. Um, so we're going to need another track to put it on, so we go to Insert, Insert MIDI Track, where the key command again is Shift command T or Windows Shift Control T. And now we have a second MIDI track. So with our track still selected, I'm going to go to the plugin device browser and select Tiki Clav, which is a great little free clav plugin. And I'm now going to show you another way of dropping a plugin onto a track. I'm going to drag the Tiki Clav plugin to the bottom of the screen where it says drop MIDI effects, audio effects, and instruments here. So as soon as I do that, the instrument is in the track. Okay, and here we see the control panel. And once again, I'm going to close that because we don't need to see it right now. So let's repeat the process for the MIDI and audio settings by setting it to fast lane port A. Um, however, for the MIDI channel, this time we're going to set it to channel 2 because, again, we want independent control over the different instruments from our MIDI controller. Lastly, we're going to set the monitor mode to in. And once again, I'll rename the track by selecting the track and Command R, and I'm going to type Clav. So again, we know what it is. To set up our third instrument, I'll show you yet another method of creating an instrument track. This time, I'm going to go right to the plugin device browser and drag the Mini Monster plugin to the part of the screen that says Drop Files and Devices here. And once I do that, that actually creates a new track for me automatically with the plugin already in it. Uh, the Mini Monster is by G Media Music, and it is a uh, really amazing Mini Moog sounding plugin, and uh, it's one of my favorites. But again, we don't need to see the control panel, so I'm going to close that. So then we just have to repeat the process of setting the input output settings. So again, Mini from Fast Lane. USB, port A, and then this time channel 3 for the MIDI, and monitor in. 
and then again we'll rename the track. So now when I play my controller on channel 1, I have my Rhodes plugin, channel 2, we have our Clav plugin, and channel 3. We have our Minimoog plugin, and I have separate control of all three instruments from my MIDI controller.